Hello and welcome back to Eclipse Clan. Today we are picking up not where we left off necessarily, just because it's been a second for me. Uh, lots just going on, so it still may not be the longest episode ever, but I have completed a rough generator that will be rolling at the start of every moon just to see what happens. I'll be using our mediator to reflect the relationships accordingly where we can. She's still included in there, so there could be some events we may not be able to super easily reflect, but we'll give it a go. I didn't do the war one just yet, uh, because we're not actively in anything, and it does take some time to come up with those situations. But, hopefully this will be a good start to see what happens. I'll still probably add or tweak a few things as we go here. I seem to get the same two or three things, but we have like 15 or 20 possibilities, not to mention deviations of the possibilities. So hopefully we don't get stuck on the same two or three things. There is a chance that short firm just outright attacks the opposition and some chance that the opposition rises against short burn. And then all the cats that are in between are gonna be where they are. River is getting hungry despite it being two hours early. So she may be whining for some food. So I suppose we'll just start off like we always do with a time skip here. Okay, well, uh, never mind. I think I'll go ahead and go make a war generator now. See you guys in a bit. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm back. I have created a war generator. It took me way too long. Um, kind of similar to the other one. It seemed to have a few different traits that it really preferred, despite the numbers that I was putting into it for it to prefer. So we'll see. There are chances for warriors to get hurt and to die in this generator. Obviously, we will be reflecting this directly in what happens in game. I can't exactly make a warrior have an injury that they don't otherwise have, but we'll probably just put them on bed rest for the moon if they get rolled for an injury, and then we can make mental note of where the scars may end up being. So, uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and go through some of these events here. Rush Raid had a litter of five kits and is absolutely refusing to talk about it or acknowledge it at all. That is a lot of little kittens and I'm sure sure and I'm sure Shortburn is ecstatic at all the little warriors that just came in. But right now she wakes one day and feels as though the world is less soul after moons of numbness. Same with Hocus Pocus, who has unfortunately gotten green cloth. And we notice that some raspberries gone bad. After many moons of tensions, Tremble Clan and Eclipse Clan, Shortburn announces that a war has started. So, I think let's first and foremost check out Rush Raid here and her five kittens. Oh my gosh, look at them. So, let's see. I. Yeah, it's not going to say who Rush Reed's mate is, so it's probably somebody in a different clan. Wouldn't it be really telling if uh, Rush Reed's mate was in Trumbull clan? Maybe I will reflect the event to come down to that here. Oh my god, wait. Pigeon Kit's a male. We have a male Torty. <gasps> That's super rare. So tortoise shells and calicos, in order to have the mixed pelts, they need to have two different X genes uh, for those different colors because the color is tied to the X chromosome. Did I say gene? I meant chromosome. <laughs> colors are tied to the X chromosome, which born females will have two X's naturally, whereas a male will have XY normally. In order to be male, you'll have to have a Y chromosome. 
But what it seems like here is that Pigeon Kit, who is male, has two X chromosomes, which is very rare since most people only have two, and a Y. So that's really rare. The clan gen used to have not as rare chances for this, but it's really gone up in recent updates, I understand. So Pigeon Kit is very special. Then we have Moth Kit, who's a newborn female with a speckled pelt, short fur, and is a know-it-all. Pigeon Kit's bullying, so hopefully he'll fit in here. Wing Kit is a newborn male with green eyes and a rosette pelt. The top of his head and back seems a much lighter color, and he is impulsive. Then we have Branch Kit, who's a speckled, Pelt male with green eyes and is nervous. Then finally we have Cliff Kit who is speckled pelt with green eyes and is insecure. Rush Reed is just considered torty, uh, but a lot of the kits here seem speckled, so I can't believe we got a male torty though. Anyway, uh, that being said, the kits at least can't be touched in the war, but we'll go ahead and roll to see what those others end up with here. So first and foremost here, I have Short Burns Leadership, so uh, disregard whatever's on here, it's just a chance it's something that could happen later. But basically this is just gonna show like who's kind of leaning to what side Short Burn versus effectively at this point Morbius Fangs. But it could very easily become just anybody who opposes her. That's what the generator's designed for. And it'll kind of show who's leaning to which direction and if any actions do occur. And we'll use Sick Nettle and the other cats to try and reflect that. So let's randomize for what we've got here. So Mole Branch, who is actively kind of against Shortburn is overheard supporting Morbius Fang in a separate conversation by Lightpaw. Lightpaw decides to keep their secret so it doesn't report that to anybody, basically. So Shortburn doesn't retaliate against Small Branch, but Mole Branch is leaning towards supporting Morbius Fang. And sometimes even just by saying silent, that says something too. So let's go and roll for our war here. Again, there's a chance that cats could die or get hurt. I kept the descriptions pretty generic just for readability in a generator, so it's not going to be perfect or super in detail or gory. But please be warned in case, you know, standard book descriptions do bother you. Things like cat gets clawed, cat gets slashed, things like that. Okay, so we'll randomize this now. Okay, so this is one of the more neutral options. Cougar Paw is seen giving a warrior the wrong herbs for the recent battle wounds. So that's not really something that's penalized, it's just meant to be that warrior could get if we knew somebody was hurt, that warrior could be down for longer, or they could um, outright just get sick and be down for the moon, or even just shows that Cougar Paw doesn't agree with it. So this is really more so meant to be seen later, but that's okay. Kind of neutral there all around. Let's see how our cats are doing. Shortburn is thinking about new ways to care for the clan. Peekfur is still assigning cats a hunting patrol. Mole Branch is debating whether or not to ask Luck Blink for guidance, knowing where they are. He's probably also just really feeling it because he wants his old mate and he wants to know what's the best course of action in this war for his clan. Hocus Pocus, who is sick, wants to get to know Morbius Fang better. That could bode ill for Shortburn. Rush Reed, who's recovering from birth, uses extra herb just to go gather more. Okay, guys. Cougar Paw is learning how to treat a burn. So that could also be why she's giving somebody the wrong herb. She's like, oh, here's what you need. And 
Somebody's like, no, actually, please don't. Sega Runner is having a good day. Apricot Trot's feeling unappreciated. Morbius Fang isn't afraid of anything. And I think this right here for the traits that she has is part of why Shortburn's still keeping her around. What well, with the wars and such happening. You don't really want to be fighting on two fronts and Morbius Fang, frankly, has probably more support than Shortburn does, so pick and choose wisely. Skypaw is wondering how Boulder Hawk is doing. Quillpaw is wondering if they'll have to fight a battle anytime soon. Apprentices are not exempt from some of these things in the generator, so you may well be in there, Quillpaw. My paw fell into the nearby creek and still feeling damp. And then we've got our mini kits. Okay, so we're saving. And then we're going to send everybody on patrol. Don Trello's solo border. Who sent to the large dog wandering along the edge of the clan's territory. Don Trail, for his personality, does not have a choice not to proceed, so he has to go. They don't feel like they have anything like the skill or power, but Don Trail would give their life for Clips Clan, charging in to courageously lead the dog away from the territory. Each moving bark has to be the herald of their doom, each rancid breath the last thing they'll ever smell, but somehow, eventually, limbs and lungs burning, they leap to refuge. Wow. Don Trail is my hero. Okay, so I just double checked here. Morbius Fang is also solo border patrol until 36 moons, so she's gonna go out on her own too. Morbius Fang is checking lines, and as Thrush Clan is strayed into the territory, they will antagonize. This is a trespass that will not be tolerated and should be reciprocated. Morbius Fang spreads their own scent on Thrush Clan's territory, ruining the clearly marked boundary lines. And relationships there have worsened. So Morbius Fang does redeem themselves from the automatic two strikes that they had there. And nobody else has any strikes right now, so it's a pretty clean slate going in here. Horsetail is gathered, which is also crucial for use in stopping blood loss, which is really good for us right now. Sega Runner suggests this might be a good chance for the cats to practice new fighting techniques, particularly with the apprentices here to learn from them and the battle to use it in. But nobody sets up to teach and everybody is a little awkward and irritated. The patrol finds a small burrow in the ground with a strange scent. They hesitate, unsure if it's worth checking. I think we will. And we find a gopher. Okay, and border patrol was not eventful. So we'll go ahead and time skip again here. Shortburn calls the clan to meeting and declares Skypaw to be a warrior. They are now called Sky Meadow and are celebrated for their perspective. Hocus Pocus is no longer coughing and sputtering. Their case of green cough is now cured. Apricot's tr Apricot Trot's wound has healed well. As the herb stores are inspected, it's noticed that some daisy has gone bad and will have to be replaced. Eclipse Clan cats reinforce the camp walls in anticipation of Tremble Clan attacks. So basically what I'm rolling in my generator is on top of what we're doing here. We're just kind of sussing things out there. And we're just gonna have to hope. But now that Sky Meadow is a warrior, they'll be taking over deputy ship position. As long as they're not like bad trait or something. Tensions are really high around camp, especially with Mole Branch, it looks like. So here's Sky Meadow, who is very pretty, actually. <laughs> he is strict. Very clever with the natural senses. Hmm. Well, strict is at least a good trait. It's not ideal, but it's a good trait. So we'll take that and we'll go ahead and swap these guys around here. There we go. Okay. So here's Apricot Trot. 
And here's what pigeon kit looks like a little bit older. Definitely keeping that like rosette pattern very strong for Mole Branch. Moth gets a cutie. Wing kit really grew into that white patterning. I'm very curious to see what that would look like grown up. Branch kit has one little white paw. Cliff kit's got some white speckling. And that's that's it. Okay. See how everyone's doing. Sky Meadow sparring. Hocus Pocus is too busy uh, treating other cats that he is ignoring his own needs. Sega Runners wondering about Morbius Fang. Peak first having a hard day. They were just demoted from deputy. Claw Splinter is itching for some excitement. Be careful what you wish for. Morbius Fang is also sparring. Kits are being kits. Okay, let's go over to our generators then. Okay, let's start off close to home. So, Shortburn hosts a vicious training session. Her relationship with Dawn Trail is worsened. This has a few different caveats. Uh, the cat that is outlined could either be the victim of a training session, which is very plausible with poor Dawn Trail. Or the cat could just not agree with her methods. But I think in this case, Dawn Trail was a victim. So we'll go ahead and we'll reflect that here with Stick Nettle. Short burn and Dawn Trail are sabotaged. Okay. And then let's see what happens with the war. Okay, so we're still in preparation stages. Mole Branch is seen gathering herbs for the upcoming battle. And I actually do need to go in here and edit this real quick so I can make Sky Paw, Sky Meadow. So two seconds while I do that. Okay, that's been edited back to our regularly scheduled content. Uh, two patrols. Once again, Mole Branch is gathering horsetail. Cougar Paw and Hocus Pocus just gather some moss for more beds. Okay, Shortburn sees two kits from Tremble Clan playing close to the border. We're currently at war with Tremble Clan, so you best know that she is going to antagonize them. <gasps> oh my god, I wasn't actually expecting that. Shortburn seizes the opportunity to weaken Tremble Clan and orders a patrol to attack and kill the kits. Obviously worsening our relationships. But I'm actually shocked that the king just allowed it to, allowed us to kill the kits right there. I was expecting it to be like scared away the kits, hurt the kits, even seize the kits, but not killing. It's totally something that Shortburn would do though, so like it's not fine, but it's not expect unexpected. Don Trail's going by himself, and he walks into an ambush. He has to proceed, and I'm very scared for him. Yeah, the rogues greatly outnumber Don Trail and have no trouble killing the lone cat. Their body is discovered the next day, covered in wounds and cold. And I think it's totally going to get blamed on Tremble Clan. Morbius Fang's punishment is up, so she's going to go on patrol with the rest. Okay, nothing bad there. Yeah, as far as these things went, that was very successful for everybody. Even Sig Runner just talked to the apprentices about a vision, so no strikes and strikes from last time we reset. And we'll go ahead and go again. So Shortburn announces that she's expecting kits, but she's not moving into nursery just yet. Rumors reach our clan that Zanea's spirit has died recently. The past moon, Dawn Trail has taken their place in Sark Clan. Eclipse Clan mourns their loss, and we share stories. Lightpaw has gotten yellow claw, and we refreshed them with the moss we got. 
And Eclipse Clan and Tremble Clan tired the war, wishing for it to end. I'm honestly really surprised that Tremble Clan would just let us kill Kits and get away with it. But maybe the more likely outcome is that Tremble Clan doesn't want to continue it and Shortburn, with everything she has to lose, doesn't want to push further than that. So. I'm still going to keep my generator since we didn't see a whole lot of what it can do and it's pretty easy with the way I set it up to substitute out the clan name so we will keep that still for next time and I'll probably just add on extra outcomes or possibilities as we go. So at least I didn't spend all the time totally for nothing. I had a feeling that that was what was going to happen if I made a very specific trip for Trample Clan. So it's totally fine there. Okay, I do think before we go into cat statuses, we will roll for our current leadership status. So while Shortburn's back is turned, Morbius doing a peek for her scene talking together about uh, protesting her. They mutually agree on Shortburn's shortcomings. So peek for is getting drawn into Morbius Fang's side here. I'll edit this accordingly. So peek for, especially right now, does have reason to resent Shortburn's preferential treatment, so I'm kind of putting her on the same level with Morbius Fang. Like, if Morbius Fang is to rebel or pursue anything further, Peekfer will be by your side sort of thing. And before I forget here, let's send Port Entrail to Sark Clan to rest where he deserves to rest. Shortburn is chattering at birds, so I think she'll probably go out hunting today. Sky Meadow is assigning cats to that patrol, so he'll probably go with his mom. I feel like it's still kind of... He's very inexperienced because he's very young, obviously. So I feel like Shortburn's not quite done mentoring him. She's just grooming him to take over for when she's gone. Uh, with the prompt that we got, I think I'll go ahead and mediate those two to kind of bond over not liking Sharpburn. Morbius Fang somehow got roped up in watching Wing Kit for the day. My paw is sick but is feeling happy. Pigeon Cat Pigeon Cat Pigeon Kit is pestering older cats to play with them. Moth Kit's correcting Sega Runner on something trivial. Wing Kit's just nervous for their apprentice ceremony. Branch Kit's growing fond of Moth Kit. Cliff Kit is hatching a plan to sneak out of camp and play. Really quick too, I'm not really sure I'm sold on Pigeon Kit's name. I kind of want it to be something a bit more special for his status here. So if you think of anything good, please give me a name suggestion down in the comments and most popular will win before next episode. If there's too many, I'll just roll run a poll I think so to kind of narrow down some of the choices there so please let me know nothing very exciting from messing cats we're gonna send these guys out hunting we see a rabbit but it seems to be acting strange we can see tremors from a few fox lengths away we're not gonna catch the rabbit knowing my luck it would be short burn that would eat it and then it would make her terribly unwell as our patrol is marking the border lines, a gang of rogues strides out, challenging us. We descend to battle without a second thought, but the rogues are stronger than expected, and eventually the patrol is forced to retreat. So everybody here gets a strike. Shortburn is unsure of how many kits they'll have. They decide to move to the nursery in preparation for the soon-to-come kits. Rushry is healed from the strand delivering their litter. But they weren't looking where they were going and tripped over a small trunk, getting a few bruises. I know some dandelions gone bad and will have to be replaced. The War of Trumple Clan has ended, so I guess before it hadn't. Okay. A uh, branch kid is scolded after sneaking out of camp. I guess I'll try and keep that in mind for next time. I thought with the prompt that came up 
It meant it was over, but I guess I'll say very explicitly next time. So I'll try and keep that in mind. We're into New Leaf though. Also, I'm just moving Zinnia Spirit over to the Sar Clan. Shortburn is rethinking their life choices. Sky Meadows, grateful to Hocus Pocus. Mole Branch received an ominous and dark message from Morning Spider, our Dark Clan guide. Peak for shredding the thought of failure. Morbius Fang spoke out a turn at the last clan meeting. Ooh. Okay. Okay, nothing super inspiring there. Okay. So Shortburn orders Claw Splinter to scar Peak Fur to remind them of their place. They fail in doing so. Shortburn is dissatisfied with the message she sent. Oof, okay, so relations worsen between all three of them. But particularly Claw Splinter and Peak Fur. Oof. Sorry guys. So, Claw Splinter and Peekfer had very strong feelings for one another. So I think what happens there is Claw Splinter goes to attack Peekfer and can do so only half-heartedly. Peekfer, shocked that Claw Splinter would even try and betray her, has her relationship and standing so sharper and worsen further. But Claw Splinter still, despite everything, can't bring herself to injure Peekfer further than that. So, uh, they don't, and it's just a mess. Shortburn is not acting on it yet, but she is very disapproving of both of the other cats. Okay, I just um, went through the cats' relations, the cats' relationships with one another. They're a mess. Everybody is gay for each other but also dislikes each other. <laughs> and cats have crushes on one another, also hate the people that they are actually in relationships with and similar, so it's a mess. And it's not super reflective of the narrative we've got going here uh, fully anyways, so Sick Nettle is gonna be busy trying to accommodate all of that like and dislike and, you know, pruning and nudging the cats in the direction that is probably most appropriate for them to go. So, there's no new mates, but there's a lot of potential for relationships and dramas and affairs and further issues from there. I think, like, every cat had at least two crushes. <laughs> or they just like nobody, so... Hocus Pocus seems to have forgotten where to find a juniper tree, much of their own embarrassment and cougar paw shock. Oof, okay, well. Strike it is, but. I don't think anything bad's gonna happen to Hocus Pocus anyway. Sky Meadow and Morbius Fang are not successful in finding something to disguise their scent, and they find no prey. Sky Meadow comes back and probably reports the lack of success directly to uh, Shortburn, who gives Morbius Fang another strike with extreme satisfaction. Morbius Fang probably feels that Sky Meadow is actively working against her, which is Possibly true. The troll stumbles across a large dog wandering the middle of the clan's territory. A lot of these cats have strikes, so they'll proceed. The patrol fights bravely, but you only need to be unlucky once. Boulderhawk gets taken out of the fight with one snap of the beast's huge jaws. The rest of the patrol rallies to defend them, and Boulderhawk is safely held back to camp where the mess and den waits. I think that will count as a strike, but really just for Boulderhawk. Who needs to heal quickly because he's on thin ice. Purring with Hocus Pocus against their back, Shortburn feels like they're going to explode with love looking at their tiny new single kitten. Rush Reed is no longer bruised. The day is so nice out that Rush Reed decides to sneak out of camp and go play in the flowers without anyone noticing, but they come back with a swollen paw having a set on a bee. I'm 
like really nervous about this because I've had cats step on a bee and then like every cat that stepped on a bee had an allergic reaction and died. Lipaw though no longer has yellow cloth. Apricot Trot has gotten a running nose. And Little Pigeon Kit picks some flowers around the camp to bring back to the mess and den. Which is precious. And I can't help but notice that we've had so many more positive effects since the wars have stopped. But it's definitely still not perfect with cats still fighting, of course. What happens today? So Mole Branch is overheard once again, supporting Morbius Fang and Peak First Side. Once again by Lightpaw. Lightpaw this time does report it to Shortburn. So Mole Branch's relationship with Shortburn worsens, and her relationship with um, Lightpaw improves. We'll focus on this though. Let's see Shortburn's new kit. Oh, we have Condor Kit, who is a little female with silver eyes and a torty pelt, medium fur, and a bullying nature. So I think, yeah, Hocus Pocus is the biological dad, which um, Condor Kit definitely looks like a pretty interesting mixture of the two. So that's not entirely surprising there. And Sharpburn has recently picked up the scent of mischievous kits in their den. Could also be their own kit too. So Cougarpaw's grown up and is wondering if she would be a good swimmer. Uh, she's still got quite a ways to go though before she'll be messing cat. Boulderhawk really needs to heal up. I'll give him a couple of moons just because I think um, he's neutral and Shorper needs neutral cats to win over rather than just poking the tense cats further. Clopaws relaxing in camp. Lightpaw, very fittingly for what happened, wants to make Shorper and Prowl, which is probably why he did report that time. It turned out to be a very interesting, like, roan color almost. And his cold. We still got a ways to go to catch up though. Quillpaw is also all grown up and has like what I like to think of as like a mutton chop mixed with an interesting swoop here for his markings. So that's honestly a combination between that and the front paws. I'm not super sure I've seen. Maybe I have. But they still got a little ways to go. I'm also still trying to figure out what to do. Is there saying different facts about different kinds of beetles in the middle of camp? I'm still trying to decide what to do with these kits here because they're not all going to be medicine cats, you know? So I think I'm going to see what the game does and then. Honestly, let's see how long I've been going here. And then honestly, I think once they're all apprentices, I'll wait for your guys' suggestions on who should mentor who. And that along with suggestions for Pigeon Kit's new name, I think we'll just switch over next time. But until then, we'll keep going here. All the medicine cats do just fine on all of their roles, so they're all good there. Saker Runner takes the two apprentices out to teach them how to hunt, but no one sets up to teach, making everyone feel awkward and like it's a waste of time, and they give up and return to camp irritated. They're just not doing very good. Ooh, the patrol hears the cat begging for their housefolk to come back just barely legible over the sound of monsters speeding away. We will proceed because this is recruitment. Apricot Trot finds a K-Pet collapsed by the Thunder Path, wailing for their housefolk. They ask why they were left here. The only explanation they have is that they're sick and maybe too much of a burden. They're offered a place in the Clitz Clan, at least until they're better, where they tentatively accept, looking longly at the Thunder Path as they're led away. Mac has joined the clan. Let's see, Mac is troublesome. 
Troublesome is considered a good trait here. He's young adult male, silver eyes and mackerel brown pelt. He has long fur and an orange collar. Learner of lore, incredible runner, proficient with extreme experience despite his age. He has green cough, which I'm more positive about than red cough. And this is what he'll look like healthy. So very pretty cat, really. And let's see what... <laughs> that just sounds like a full name, but okay. Mac Aster is going to be his full name that Chorpern decided for him. And these two randomly get to go together as well. They find a clearing with a lot of two lakes linger. Ooh. Let's see. Morbius Fang is bold. With speaking and climbing. Sky Meadow is clever and observing, so... I don't think they're going to proceed. Sky Meadow was an experience. So I was thinking about having Morbius Fang try to trick him into like a cage to get taken away. Uh, but Sky Meadow with clever and observing for traits, I don't think would be fooled by it. But I do think the relationship would probably worsen further. Okay, so a lot this moon. Sega Runner sits in the crown, chest puffed out in pride as they watch Quill Paw be named Quill Spore. Probably gonna change that suffix, I kinda hate it. And honored for their insight. They consider themselves lucky to have been able to train this cat and look forward to seeing the warrior they become. Mole Branch was bitten by a snake and unfortunately did succumb to the venom. Peekfur announced that they are expecting kits, but choose to continue duty as usual for now. Mole Branch is one of those cats who you'd always find right in the thick of things, and it's something Rushry greatly admired about them. Their drive to help Eclipse Clan. It's so strange and hard to comprehend that they'll never see Mole Branch do that again. One day, the clan will have kittens who never knew Mole Branch in life, but Rushry vows to ensure their memory will live on through them. And Mole Branch takes their place in the dark forest. Their loss is mourned, and claimants will miss the spot they took up in their lives. Morbius Fang has gotten a running nose, but Apricot Trots is healed. And Sacred Runner is caught breaking the word code, which we said is opposing short burn. So I think that's going to be an automatic two strikes. Putting them right on the edge of it here. And right before Mole Branch passed, looks like they were being very encouraging for their clan, which must have been a little bit extra hard there. Okay, well, go ahead and update the uh, generator appropriately, and we'll roll that. Okay, so that's up to date, but to finish doing that, I need to update Quillspore's name. They are just insecure with an impressive climber. Insecure is neutral, so at least it's not bad, but it's not great either. I kind of like that. Quillbat. It's an interesting thought, anyway. So, finish updating that. Okay, we should be good now. Quillbat seems to fear shortburn more than usual this moon. Which means Quillbat's, um, maybe not necessarily green with shortburn, but it's more so on shortburn's side for fear of repercussion. So, fittingly enough, we were still just on Quillbat there. Uh, we'll go ahead and improve their relationships there. I don't think I should have kept the romantic on. Oh well. Too late now. Here's Condor Kid a bit more grown up. The silver eyes and that dark orange is a very interesting combination. She's bullying but also quick to make peace, so... Kind of hesitant, maybe? Non-committal? I guess we'll see. Shortburn is staring off into space, so maybe it's just been harder on her than usual. Sky Meadow is sharpening his claws, so... Cougar Paws, ready to take care of any patients. Bigger Runner is trying to set a good example. Well, gear on thin ice there, buddy. Peekfur is 
eavesdropping on McAster. Morbius Fang is napping. McAster is hoping that Chorper notices their improvement. So McGaster seems like they're leaning toward Chorper inside. Boulderhawk is worried others are judging them. We kinda are, you got one more moon. Condor Kid is starting rumors about Cliff Kid. I didn't notice that earlier. Who's just excited for their apprentice ceremony next moon? Climate, uh, the Mezzan cats once again are fine. They gather some herbs where they can. Rabbit bursts from cover, startled by the patrol. Who rally instantly and manage to corner and catch the rabbit. So Sig Runner at least made up that. And is fine for now. So right now our only strikes are with Morbius Fang and Boulderhawk, who are collectively at two, so Boulderhawk needs to heal up. Also, something I've been debating. It feels kind of weird to let a cat like get all the way up to two strikes and then get reset to zero and then get all the way up to two strikes, reset to zero, like repeat indefinitely. So let me know what you think about just having it be like constantly fluctuating. So like they can have a chance to get ahead or get behind. But so what I mean is like if they ever reach three strikes or done, let's say a cat starts neutral, they catch a bird. So it's plus one. They catch another bird plus two, but then they go on a stint in the medicine den for three moons so now they're collectively at one strike and then say they fail a border patrol so now they're at two strikes does that sound like something that could be a bit more interesting to give cats a chance to heal up longer periods and maybe they can't go as far into the positive if they have bad or neutral traits and if they had ideal traits rather than just kind of working off the negatives let me know morbius fang finds an abandoned kit whose parents are nowhere to be found the kit is rushed back to camp but grows weak and dies a few days later so that's a neutral thing um i don't really want to say that resets morbius fang strikes and she's on thin ice anyway but i will reduce her down to just one and the others are fine this patrol notices a butterfly clan patrol renewing scent marks ahead. We antagonize, standing tall and approaching with insults and threats. They need to be sure that butterfly clan knows how strong Cliff's clan cats are. Cool bat spits and hisses until the other patrol leaves, intimidated by how we're acting. Good. And that's everybody. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot that happened this moon here. As Pitch and Paw touches noses with Morbius Fang, they hope there'll be a cool mentor that won't assign boring tasks, anything but gathering moss or tick duty. Mothpaw has reached six moons and made an apprentice to somebody. Wingpaw touches noses with Quillbat, hoping they'll get to do something that will really impress the clan for, say, like catching a fat rabbit or chasing off a fox. That'll show the clan they're the best apprentice anyone's ever seen. Branchpaw has reached age of six moons and been made apprentice. Clippaw touches noses with Boulderhawk, their new mentor, looking intimidated and nervous. Peekfur thinks they'll have a large litter and don't believe they can officially perform their duties while expecting and decide to move into the nursery. Sicknettle announces that they're expecting kits but won't be moving into the nursery just yet. We have so many kits on the way and that's very exciting. Rush Reed's beasting is feeling better. Morbius Fang's running nose has stopped. Boulder Hawk's mangled tail is healed, but the injuries left them scarred. So they just need to win over this patrol and then they'll be fine. Sky Meadow trips over an unseen rabbit hole, spraining their paw. Pigeon Paw is pushing through some dense shrubs and felt the branches tear painfully at their pelt. McAster is no longer coughing and sputtering. Their case of green cough is now cured. And Quillbat cool was seen touching noses with a loner. How scandalous. So we have a lot to think about here. I think I will also... No, I don't think I will roll the generator just yet. I'm very curious to hear what everybody thinks. 
about everything I proposed here. We will see our new apprentices before we quit though. So here is Pigeon Paw. He honestly almost has like a chimera look to his torty patterns. But he had quite the adventure today. His trait is cold, interesting clan history, and mentors Morbius Fang. So let me know what you think his name should be, Blankpaw, and who you think his mentor should be. We can keep Morbius Fang to keep it interesting or switch that to someone else. Mothpaw is charismatic and confident with words. She's got this like interesting gradient to the spots and tail. It's like the further away or up it gets, the darker it is. And she's showing off her new battle moves to Condor Kit. And her mentor is Apricot Trot. Wingpaw is feeling proud of the progress that they've made. And nice, he is bloodthirsty and confident with words. So we're going to hope to nurture that bloodthirsty trait. So please let me know who you think his mentor should be. His white spots have really remained very white. <laughs> so it almost just looks like he's wearing a little cap and like socks on the top of him. Branch Paw had a very strange dream. He's faithful and confident with words. Since his mom is fresh read, he could also be a med cat too if you think that Branch Paw would be fitting in that role. Cliffpaw is in awe of Signal's conflict resolution skills. She is insecure, still a moss ball hunter, and has quite the interesting like patching here. Condor Kit says kitty pets can't be real warriors. Thanks Condor Kit for that insight there. I do think I'm going to change Mac Aster's name to McAster since I'm already just pronouncing it like that. Like old McDonald. <laughs> McAster. Now he's a farm cat. You can't tell me otherwise. Well, they used to be a kitty pet, but after dreaming of sorry for cats, followed the whispers to the clan. Okay. Let's say Apricot Trot's history. Used to live as a loner, but was chased from their home. And her trade sneaky, fast as the wind, and a great teacher. We'll go through the candidates real quick here. So we've got Chorpern, who's bloodthirsty and a good hunter. Sky Meadow, who's tricked, very clever with unnatural senses. Who's currently hurt with a sprain, but could benefit from the experience of an apprentice. We know our mess and cats. We've got Sick Nettles, Mediator, if we do want to switch over there. Cold and a great storyteller. Rush Reed is adventurous, eloquent speaker, and talented swimmer if we want to give her any of her kits. Sega Runner is nervous and incredible runner. Peakfur is nervous, unusually strong fighter, but is pregnant, so is off the docket. Class Winter is lonesome, an excellent teacher and good mediator. Morbius Fang is bold, eloquent speaker and good climber. McAster here is troublesome, learner of lore, an incredible runner. Boulderhawk is adventurous and a lore master, but could be getting kicked out next patrol. Quillbats cool insecure and impressive climber. And Lightpaw is still an apprentice himself, so. That's our current clan. Let me know what you're thinking of all the questions I've had. There were quite a few. So I do hope that you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoy what you've gotten to see of my generator so far. If you have any recommendations for interactions, even if they are between specific cats, but preferably just something that could happen to anybody, Please let me know in the comments as well, and I'd be happy to include those thoughts. Uh, it could be battle, it could be tensions with the clan, anything at all. So just let me know. I hope you enjoyed, though. Until next time, stay safe and happy. I'll see you then. 
and bye